morning, everyone, and welcome to the November 2022 REC release drop-in session. Um, my name is Amy. Uh, I work on the communications team for the REC code manager, and I will be facilitating today's session. I have joining me today Fiona and Michael from the code manager team. Um, so just to kick us off a few bits of housekeeping, this session is being recorded and the recording and slides for this event will be made available on the REC portal on the REC release page next week. If everyone could please keep their microphones and cameras off unless speaking, it would be greatly appreciated. To ask a question today, we're using Slido and you can access this via the QR code that's currently on screen. If you have a smartphone, you can scan this QR code using um, your phone camera or alternatively, you can type in the number that's currently on screen to slido.com. You can, if you have Teams as your default app, um, you can also um, select the S at the top of the screen and this should take you directly to Slido. Please feel free to raise your questions as they come to you throughout the session, um, but we will have a designated Q&A section. And I will now pass over to Fiona to take us through the agenda for today. Thank you, Amy. So uh, in um, scope of uh, the November release, we have proposed um, six changes. Four of them have been approved and two of them are still going through the change process. But today we're going to go through all of them to uh, advise you of what uh, the changes are and uh, who they will impact. Uh, so those changes are R18, so the Complex Sites Process Improvements, uh, R22, which was approved yesterday, Amendment to Rep Data Access Matrix, R31, altering the trigger points for CT commissioning, um, R33, the Micro Business Smart Meter Installation Reports, and then the two that are still progressing through the change process are the Extensive Housekeeping Amendments and R54, EES Access for Virtual Lead Parties. Once we've been through those, we'll talk to you about what support will be available to you at implementation. And then uh, we are also going to talk to you about the digital uh, navigator, um, which um, I will uh, pass over to my colleague, Michael, who will take you through that because that is going to be released as a part of this November release. Once we've been through that, you will have the opportunity to ask us any questions you have regarding this release. If we could go on to the next slide, please. And the next slide again. Thank you. So R18. Uh, so R18, um, it was identified. This is um, aligned to a BSC change. Uh, BSC did some investigations. They had issue uh, 80, report 88 um, out of uh, their investigations, which identified that the complex site process is not consistent. Um, that the complex, when a complex uh, site uh, supplementary information form can be interpreted differently, and when a form should be um, uh, raised is also interpreted differently, which can lead to um, inefficiencies uh, in effect in ineffectiveness of the process. So to mitigate this issue, um, it was agreed between BSC and um, the REC that a new complex site supplementary implementation implementation information form will be implemented with clear guidance on when the form should be submitted um, by a meter equipment manager and uh, it's, the clear guidance provides a view of the different data items um, and how they should be interpreted. So in terms of impacts, uh, we have the meter equipment managers who are impacted as they are responsible for raising uh, the SIF uh, and need to understand the scenarios of when the form should be raised. Um, and also uh, what data items are required in what fields. The recipients of this form are the electricity suppliers, distribution network operators and the half hourly data collectors. So as a recipient of the forms, um, you guys would need to know um, how you're going to be impacted by those changes. And if you extract that data into, your, into internal systems or processes, uh, make sure that you understand um, what uh, data items you need to utilise and make those necessary amendments. 
In terms of uh, rep product changes, it's Schedule 14 that will be updated. It's going to be in Appendix uh, 2. Uh, so currently, when you look at Schedule 14 on the rep portal, you'll see Appendix 2 and 3, which covers the complex sites supplementary information form. Um, in the new version, we won't have an appendix Appendix 3, but we will have an Appendix 2, which will have the information and example of what that form looks like and the guidance uh, for MEMS on when a, the scenarios of when a form is required and how to complete that form. Um, so then um, this is a code only change, so no uh, REC systems or REC service providers are impacted by this change. One of other product is impacted by this change, though, which is the, the SIF form. Um, this is a BSC owned form. However, uh, for the first time, it will be hosted on the REC portal under the forms and templates page. Um, and this change will be implemented on in full on the 4th of November. If we could move on to the next slide, please. So the next change we have in scope of this release is amendment to REC data access matrix. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this change was approved by the responsible committee yesterday. The reason this change uh, was originally uh, raised is that um, the EES user categories, um, they could have, under the MRA, they could have been on a one-to-one -one relationship. So not e every EES user category had, um, or EES user within an EES user category had access to the same data items. So what um, the code manager has done is completed a mapping exercise to identify all of the EES user categories and what data items um, are available to those users within those categories. And that's going to provide a uniform standardised uh, level of access across the uh, uh, EES portal. So what that does mean for, for you is that you will, if you will either not be impacted by this change because you've got access to all of the data items that you need to. Alternatively, um, if you are an EES user, um, you may see additional data items available to you. So I think it's important to, to reiterate that you will not see a detriment. You will not see any data items removed from your access. So in terms of parties uh, that are uh, impacted by this change is anyone that is an EES user and non-domestic consumers. We will be introducing a new EES user category, which is the EMRS, which stands for Electricity Market Reform Settlement Lim Limited. That um, new user category will be referenced in Schedule 12, uh, the data access. Um, that is the only amendment that will take place to that rec product. Um, and the data access matrix will be amended to show all of the EES user categories and that st standardized, standardized access of what data items will be available to each category. It's also worth mentioning at this point uh, as well that uh, the data access matrix will have a new format. So throughout this process, uh, what feedback was um, given on what the data access matrix was like to utilize from an aesthetic perspective, how easy it is to use. Uh, we took that feedback on board and as a result uh, we have implemented a new format that will be easier to navigate and more aesthetically pleasing. This is the first uh, technical change uh, for uh, the REC. Uh, the code elements of this change, so Schedule 12 and the data access matrix, will be implemented in full on the 4th of November. So as an EES user, you'll be able to go in on the 4th and access that data access matrix and identify which um, data items you will have access to. Um, and the technical element of the change, uh, we have to wait until the change is approved before we can start the planning element of uh, the technical 
um, sorry, the planning of the technical element. Um, that has started now with the um, service provider and once complete, the implementation date will be published via the release plan. However, I can confirm the approach to deployment of this change will be in one go. So uh, what that means is the um, provider will make all the necessary changes uh, across all EES use categories and then we'll deploy that in one go. So the release plan will be updated uh, with that implementation date once the planning has been complete. If we could move on to the next slide please. So the next uh, change that has been approved for implementation is the altering the trigger points for CT commissioning. So currently um, distribution network operators um, need to send uh, pre-commissioning information um, within five working days. However, in the instance where a low voltage fuel supply um, takes place, where the energisation is the responsibility of the registered supplier and the registered supplier requests that energisation of a meter equipment manager, the um, distribution network operator doesn't always know who that appointed mem is. So as a result, they have to, the DNO will have to wait until the D139 has been uh, received or sorry the D383 has been received um, to then uh, make sure that they can send the, the required information. So as a result of that, that is quite often in today's uh, scenario, uh, in that scenario in today's world, that can quite often be outside of that five working days. So what we're doing to resolve the issue is we're making a change to the code only and it's only that time frame. So there's no technical changes uh, required uh, for this one. It's that uh, the DNO can send the pre-commissioning uh, information once the D139 has been received from the MEM. However, this must be within the 10 working day period. So parties impacted by this change are the distribution network operators uh, because they uh, will need to know that the time frame of their uh, obligation has been amended, but also know the time frames of, of uh, the the, the new timeframes and the meter equipment managers because uh, they will receive that pre uh, um, commissioning information. So if you uh, have any internal processes that you need to change off the back of the change of that timeframe, you need to do that impact assessment, make sure those changes are in place for the 4th of November. So rep products impacted by this change, we've only got one which is schedule 14 and that's um, the metering operation schedule and it's just updating those timings. So this change will be implemented in full on the 4th of November. If we could move on to the next slide please. Thank you very much. So this one uh, is also an approved change. It's the micro business smart meter installation reports. So prior to the implementation of the REC, um, suppliers had access to both the domestic and micro business uh, smart meter installation reports. However, it was only the domestic element that was actually written into the MRA. So as a result, when we transitioned over to the REC, it was only the domestic reports that were written into the code. Um, that meant that suppliers, although pre um, the REC had access to those micro business um, smart metering installation reports, it meant from September 2021 access um, was no longer available. It is useful for information. Um, it helps um, suppliers understand uh, their own performance against smart meter installation and the performance of others to be able to implement in, um, improvements to their implement installation programs. So the change proposal was raised by a supplier. It was uh, very well supported um, that uh, we introduce reintroduce at uh, this um, sorry introduce business smart micro business smart meter installation reports into the code. Um, because we have had data from September 2021, we were able to backdate uh, the in implementation of those reports. So uh, what we have done that's already been published right now, uh, the reports you can see 
uh, are on the supplier performance reporting page on the REC portal. This um, pack will be added to the REC information, uh, sorry, REC release information page on the portal. So you will have access to that link to be able to go and access those reports from September 2021 to date. They, when you look at the um, portal, you'll see the domestic reports and there'll be another column on the right, which will have the micro business reports there for you. Um, what that does mean is that Schedule 16 has needed to be updated uh, to introduce uh, to uh, the REC the uh, inclusion of the micro business smart meter installation reports. Also within uh, that uh, schedule, you will have the timings of when the reports are produced. So what the smart, um, the micro business reports will do is follow the same time frame as the domestic reports, which means the next available report will be in December this year. So in terms of parties that are impacted, that is energy suppliers, the, the type of impact is that you will be able to utilise those reports to uh, monitor your own performance with your smart meter installations and identify any improvements to your installation programme. This change will be implemented in full on the 4th of November. As I said, this, the um, historical uh, reports have already been published, so the only part left to implement is Schedule 16. If we can move on to the next slide, please. Thank you very much. So now we're going to talk about the two changes that are potentially in scope of this release. The first one is R36, which is extensive housekeeping. Could we move on to the next slide, please? Thank you very much. So there are currently some inconsistencies between the drafting of the REC and the processes uh, that parties operate. And this is not just rep parties, but this is also service providers as well. So this could potentially cause some issues um, in how uh, these are interpreted and, and the effective operation assurance of the, the retail energy market. So as a, a, a mitigation for this, we are implementing the necessary updates to all of the REC products. The REC products, as, it, as um, outlined by the, the title, housekeeping amendments, are mostly typographical or formatting errors, um, and they will be uh, rectified. Um, the table that you have on this page here is um, what we are expecting, and it will be confirmed once the final change report has been published on Friday. But this is what we are expecting to have in scope of uh, this particular change. So this change will apply to all rec parties, and it's really for your awareness as to what these changes are. Um, you. Um, from the consultation that we did through this change is that uh, you are operating it in the way that uh, is expected. We are just updating the um, products to reflect the uh, retail energy market code as it should be. If we can move on to the next slide, please. Thank you. So these are a list of the change types. So again, this table, um, same with the other table, uh, will be um, confirmed with the final change report on Friday. So what I will do is if there are any changes to this, I will update this pack, which will be available on the rec release information page. Um, and uh, so here you can see it is mostly typographical uh, changes um, and uh, clarification, and we've got some formatting there as well. So um, the this is a code only change. The final change report will be published this Friday, which is the 7th of October. The responsible committee will vote on the 18th of October. What we will then do is publish the amended release plan on the 19th of October, which um, I will also include uh, a list of the products that are impacted and the type of changes that are impacted. So you can see where those changes uh, apply. We can move on to the next slide, please. And then the up final proposed change is R54. This is um, EES access for virtual lead parties. So virtual lead parties are a relatively new role to the market. They were introduced in April and they're a BSE owned um, party. So they um, 
to, to carry out their role, they need to uh, provide their customers MPAM as a part of their processes. To date, they have to rely on getting the information from their customer, which isn't always a, a, a reliable source of uh, information. So um, what we are doing is we are going to provide virtual lead parties access to the uh, ES portal, which is the most reliable source of this data. So with that, um, the virtual lead parties uh, will have access to the address and the M MPAN core data. So this change only impacts virtual lead parties. The products that are impacted are Schedule 1, um, which is the interpretation. It will introduce uh, the virtual lead party as a definition and the data access matrix. So the data access metri matrix will have a new um, EES user category, which will be the virtual lead party. And it will show that they have access to the data items, address and MPAN core. So this is a code and technical change. Uh, the final change report will be published on Friday the 14th of October with the responsible committee voting on the 26th of October. Should um, the approval be achieved, the release plan will be uh, released on the following date, the 27th of October. The code element of this change, so the implementation of the amended schedule and the data access matrix will be delivered in full on the 4th of November, with the technical change being delivered as a part of R22. So um, when um, we know the date uh, that um, the changes from R22 will be implemented, that will be the same date for the changes for R54. We can move on to the next slide, please. So we have some um, information around post implementation support for you. If we can move on to the next slide, please. Um, so in the initial instance, if you raise a service desk inquiry or email inquiries at recmanager.co.uk, uh, a member of the code manager will be on hand to assist you. Alternatively, you can go to your appointed operational account manager and they will be happy to assist you with your inquiry. If, however, you have an inquiry that relates to the BSC elements of the change, that is uh, for R18 and R31, you can contact BSC release at alexon.co.uk. Um, the release manager and the coordinator for this change, um, if you mark your uh, query for their attention, so in this instance it's Rajesh and George, they will then be on hand to assist you with your inquiry. If your inquiry is relating with to a technical issue, so anything relating to R18 or R30, uh, sorry, R80, so start again, R22 or R54, and it's a technical element of um, the, so you're having an issue with the EES portal, you can contact uh, the um, service provider on support at cnc-uk.com. And if we can move on to the next slide, please. Ah, there should be another slide in here, um, which relates to the digital navigator. Um, Michael, do you want to? Yeah, hold on. I can uh, maybe swap onto my screen. Thank you. Uh, one second. Sorry about this. Let me just get my self set. There we go. Um, so yeah, good morning, everyone. So um, just wanted to uh, grab a couple of minutes of your time to draw attention to the fact that we are launching the new REC Digital Navigator on the 24th of October. So a bit of background here, the, the REC Digital Navigator is a new tool for industry that can be used to explore the REC legal, uh, legal text and data specification. Whilst the EMAR is an extremely powerful tool, we took the feedback on board from industry that it was perhaps slightly uh, harder to engage with and to use for those day-to-day uh, -day activities. So we have very much designed the digital navigator with that in mind. So 
the navigator itself has a much simpler design. It's very easy to navigate and is uh, extremely responsive. So with the launch preceding the um, the November release, I can confirm that moving forward for, for this release and all future releases, we will be updating both the, na the navigator as well as the email. So we will be running both tools um, for, for the foreseeable future. So you will still be able to access email to see uh, upcoming changes and pre-release material, but there'll also be the REC digital navigator for your sort of day-to-day -day code in uh, engagements. Um, so we will be running a industry event on the 11th of October at 10 a.m. where we'll be inviting industry to um, to view the new digital navigator and we'll also be sharing a link so that attendees can explore the tool live and provide feedback to us ahead of its uh, launch on the 24th of October. So I encourage you all to uh, please sign up to the uh, to the session on the events page on the portal. Um, and yeah, so welcome any any questions. Shall I hand Thanks. the stream back yeah. over? Yeah. Yeah. So um, what we'll do now is go through uh, any questions. Um, so I'm going to pass over to Amy, who will be able to confirm if we've had any questions come through. So we've not had any come in as of yet, but just to remind everybody. Oh, sorry, we've just had one come up on the screen. Um, so are any changes being made to the data flows in the EMAR in the November release as a result of changes being made in the BSC? The answer to that is yes. Um, Paul, I believe you, you're with EDF. So um, Yes, BSC um, have confirmed that they are going to be making some changes. Um, it was brought to our attention that they will be making changes under their change uh, 1560. So uh, we are having meetings with them right now to understand exactly what those changes are. That will be built into the data specification, which will be then published in the pre-release. So the, the short answer to your question is yes. Um, I believe um, a member of your team has uh, emailed regarding that and I'm in the process of uh, responding with the information that uh, BSC have provided to date. Yeah, and uh, uh, all the, the pre-release is being put together at the moment and it should be available pretty soon. Thanks, Bo. Um, just to remind okay. everyone, if you want to raise a question, you can scan the QR code that's currently on the screen with the camera on your smartphone, or you can go to slido.com in your web browser and type in the number that's on screen at the moment. So we haven't had any more questions come through on Slido and um, I don't believe we've had any come through on the chat function. Um, no. Uh, so what I would say is if you come away from this session and you do think of some questions, please do raise a service desk inquiry or reach out to your operational account manager. Um, and let us know what those questions are. And we'll be happy to um, support you with uh, obtaining the answers you need. Uh, but if there are uh, no questions right now, um, I would uh, recommend that we close this session 
uh, but say thank you all very much uh, for coming. Um, Amy, is there anything that you wanted to cover before we close today's session? Thanks, Fiona. Yes, so um, as Fiona said, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we hope that you found the session useful. Um, we would greatly appreciate any feedback that you may have on today's event, and we have set up a quick survey on Slido. So please feel free to submit any feedback that you may have. Um, and thanks again. Have a good day.